Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about Star Wars Battlefront. I just came back from the Star Wars celebration in Anaheim. I saw the trailer, just like most of you guys should have by now, and I also saw the five minute in game gameplay trailer. Now, starting off, I want to address one of the biggest concerns I've seen so far on the internet after this trailer has launched, and that is at the very end of the trailer in the bottom right corner, it says not actual gameplay. This is unfortunately one of the most misleading statements to put at the end of the trailer because what it actually means is that they just filmed it with sort of cinematic camera angles. It doesn't mean that the assets and effects and lighting and all that doesn't represent the actual in-game graphics. I wish they had actually launched the five minute gameplay trailer at the same time because I think that would have pretty much just answered everybody's questions about how amazing this game is going to look. Now the five minute gameplay trailer that I saw was all recorded from the first person on the PS4 at 60 frames per second and it looked phenomenal which is really cool that they're showing it off on the PS4 just to show you that you're not going to need some sort of monster PC to make the game actually look this good. Now that being said, the PS4 did have a bunch of jagged edges from non anti alias uh, textures and models and stuff like that. And uh, that's not really a big deal for me personally, but I think the uh, trailer that was launched for everybody today was actually rendered on the PC and you can see that there aren't very many jagged edges. Uh, the graphics are pushed to the max in that one. Now let's go over some of the stuff we learned today from the trailer and from the event and I'll even fill you in on stuff that I learned from the five minute gameplay trailer and the presentation that I was able to see behind closed doors. So first things first, the game is coming out on November 17th. There is a 40 player max limit that might be a disappointment to some people. Honestly, I'm okay with it as long as the maps are designed well around that player count. There's going to be a potential for split screens on console gameplay. There will also be a first and third person perspective that you can switch between at any time while playing the game. This is great news for fans of the original Battlefront and a little bit concerning for perhaps PC players not used to playing third person games because third person perspective does allow for that ability to potentially look around corners without exposing yourself. However, However, the third person perspective does not move far back from your character so it doesn't give you uh, a huge advantage in terms of corner looking. The game is coming out on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. The uh, available planets that you can play on at launch will be Endor, Tatooine, Hoth, and Solist, and then Jakku is launching later in a free DLC for anyone who buys the game. You will be able to fly ships like the X-Wing and TIE Fighters, however they are going to be locked into ground based maps. It doesn't appear that there's going to be any space battles shipping with the game potentially later on but I have a feeling that maybe EA is saving massive scale spaceship battles for a different title down the road that seems like it might make more sense is to build a game specifically designed around massive X-Wing and TIE Fighter battles as opposed to kind of integrating it into Battlefront but not doing it quite the justice that it deserves. Now you will also be able to play as heroes in the game aside from just the Stormtroopers and Rebels. So Darth Vader will be one of those, Boba Fett will be another one, I imagine Luke Skywalker, Yoda, you can really just kind of go down the list of all your favorite characters from Star Wars. There's also going to be a buddy system in the game that allows you to spawn on one other player and you can also share unlocks with that player. It sounds very similar to the Medal of Honor system. There will also be a co-op mission system so it sounds like there's going to be an AI presence in this game that you can fight against and there's going to be an offline mission system. I don't believe this will actually be a traditional single player but more of practice battles and that kind of thing. Now the game seems to be focusing primarily on the original trilogy theaters of war so there'll be battles on Ender, Hoth, Tatooine and you'll also be able to fight on uh, Jakku when they launch the first DLC which will come out on December 8th and December 1st if you pre-order. Now the Battle of Jakku actually takes place before the Force Awakened movie timeline so this battle could have actually taken place during the original trilogy but wasn't actually covered in the movie so the game itself should give us a bit of insight into uh, the lead up to the film. So that's actually kind of a cool relationship between the game and the upcoming movie. Now this isn't to say that the DLC won't focus on some of the other films or even TV shows. We can only speculate really at this point. There was another thing that they really tried to show off or promote during the Behind Closed Doors presentation and that was a updated sound system using Dolby Atmos technology. They did a demonstration switching between stereo, surround sound, and then Dolby Atmos um, to show us the differences in them. Honestly it was hard for me to tell the difference between surround sound and Dolby Atmos. Uh, it could have just been the stage that we were on not having the best speaker system or 
Uh, just a lot of resonating sound from the event around us. I'm not particularly concerned about the sound quality of this game because uh, if DICE's history with Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 tell us anything, they know how to do really good in-game audio. Now let's talk about the five minute gameplay demo that I was able to see behind closed doors and that hopefully you guys will see soon if uh, EA decides to release this. You start off on the forest moon of Endor walking down a path in the middle of the forest and you hook up with some other rebel fighters. You quickly engage stormtroopers in the middle of the forest and the lighting and spectacle of the visual effects is really amazing and not only just amazing but super authentic to the original films and that was something that they kept reiterating during the presentation was that this was the most authentic looking Star Wars game ever made because they actually got exact scans of all of the models of everything back at the uh, LucasArts vault. So they said everything was as accurate to the films as it possibly could be. Now as you go from walking through the forest to actually engaging and shooting at stormtroopers with your blaster, your user interface kind of pops up on screen taking you out of the element of the cinema aspect of it a little bit and reminding you that you're actually playing a game. The UI certainly isn't too intrusive though. You have a little mini map in the lower left corner, kind of uh, readouts on health and ammo and that kind of thing. The standard stuff you would expect from a shooter. And just like in the trailer, speeder bikes go whizzing past. You're able to shoot them off the bike. Uh, multiple ATSTs attack your battalion and uh, you can shoot them with rockets. There's even a guy that jumps up with jump packs and shoots a rocket at it. Uh, rockets seem to be battle pickups. I don't know if there's any way to spawn with them right now, but um, there were just kind of rockets hidden throughout parts of the map. So your main character goes over, picks up a rocket launcher, and you're able to use it. The ATAT -AT also comes walking through the forest at one point, and your battalion shoots quite a few rockets at it, uh, unable to destroy it at that point. I can't remember if rockets or Y wings actually end up taking it down, like in the trailer, but uh, it looks like it can take a hell of a beating. There's also a moment where a rebel standing next to you gets sniped by a green laser rifle. You look up in the trees and you actually see the Ewok village but it's been overrun by stormtroopers and there is a stormtrooper sniper up there and he's shooting down at you and you guys shoot back up at him kill him and he kind of falls out of the trees and it's a very cool looking effect in fact visually the game is just on a whole nother level I think they've really outdone the visual quality of Battlefield 4 of any of the crisis games I think this is the next stage in graphical evolution and I'm not just trying to be sensational when I say that if they release the game play trailer to the public which I really hope they do soon you guys will be able to see for yourselves now obviously I can't comment on balance or weapon mechanics or net code or hit registration or any of that stuff I wasn't actually able to play the game just watch this gameplay trailer but from a visual standpoint and from an audio standpoint it looks impeccable now back to the gameplay trailer once your band of rebels has taken out the ATAT -AT you and one other rebel move up to a bunker the same bunker that you would uh, recognize from episode six you open the front doors go inside close the doors behind you and you start navigating down some corridors inside so there seems to be a fairly seamless transition from big gorgeous outdoor environments to inside narrow corridor type combat areas now your teammate has taken point he's clearing the corners before you get there and upon clearing one corner he gets uh, force lifted into the air. You can't see what's doing this because you're kind of behind him about 10 steps back. Uh, he's getting choked, holding his throat, and then gets thrown into a wall. You come around the corner and see Darth Vader standing there in the hall. You begin firing at him and he very nonchalantly starts blocking your lasers and stepping towards you. As he gets closer, he winds up for a swing, swipes, and then the gameplay trailer ends. Now at this point in the presentation, I was sold. It looked amazing. Everything about it looks so freaking authentic and real at points you know if they didn't have some of the text that came up on screen that said uh, actual gameplay at moments your mind is almost thinking that you're looking at footage of somebody walking through a redwood forest in northern california now obviously i can't tell you if this is a good game yet i haven't been able to play it i can tell you that the game looks amazing and that it looks like it's going to be a good game based on everything that i've seen i also know that dice is designing the game so i have a lot of faith in them being able to back up the amazing visuals with fun gameplay 
Now that being said, if you're a Star Wars fan, I think that there's going to be little that can be done to sway you from actually buying this game. Visually, it's just so flippin' impressive, it's like living out one of your Star Wars fantasies. So, uh, if you're a Star Wars fan, I can almost guarantee that you're going to buy this game whether or not it gets panned by the critics upon release, or whether or not it's like the greatest review of all time. If you're not a huge Star Wars fan, then you do have a lot of stuff to consider and think about. All I can say is that the visuals look amazing so far and we'll have to wait and see on the gameplay. So anyway, that's the information that I have about the game so far. I really hope EA releases that gameplay trailer so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about with just the visual quality of this game. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.